Am I live? Afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Pete Chadwick. I'm Director of Product Management for Cloud and Systems Management at SUSE. And we're here to talk today about why we think, why SUSE thinks that um, OpenStack is a, it's a perfect platform to bring all of these interesting technologies together. So VMs, containers, and bare metal. So one of the things that we've, yeah. I need to go up here. So one of the things we've done is we've worked with some analysts to go out and talk to customers to understand what enterprises view of containers and, uh, and cloud environments, specifically OpenStack. And I'm not going to read the statistics to you, but you can see that 82% of enterprises um, are already using or plan to use OpenStack. I mean, they're already investigating that. We've seen quite a lot of interest from, uh, from our enterprise customers. At the same time, 71% of them expect to start using containers within the next 12 months. So you can see there's a huge overlap between what people are looking for from a, from a private infrastructure cloud um, deployment, as well as looking at containers as a way that they want to deploy applications going forward. Um, so we see that these two technologies coming together is something that's really going to change how our customers want to go to market or, or build out their next generation applications. Similarly, there was a survey that was done by OpenStack, also some work that was done at 451 Group that talked about what, are, what is the existing OpenStack community doing with containers. And you can see that, that if you look at what interesting technologies or what technologies that are coming in out of the uh, open source community in general that uh, OpenStack users are interested in, 75% of them said containers. Um, you still have people looking at, at SDN, you still have people looking at bare metal, which is ironic, but clearly the overwhelming interest is how do I, how do I marry my container initiatives with, um, with OpenStack? And interestingly, you know, if you look back at where, where OpenStack was when it started back in 2010, you know, nobody was talking about containers at all. And that has really started to, to change over the last five years or so. So why? Why is this so interesting to people? Um, I mean, it is available pretty much on every major platform today, whether it's a public cloud, whether it's a private cloud, uh, whether it's an operating system, all the Linux distributions support containers, Windows supports containers now. So it's, they're pretty much everywhere that you can take advantage of them. And it's going to continue to grow through the rest of, well, it did continue to grow through the rest of last year. I didn't update the slide. Um, and the idea is that it, it, it's all about increasing the speed with which enterprises can develop applications and deliver them to their end, end user community. Now it's our opinion that to make that really work, you need to have a flexible software defined infrastructure in your data center, or you need to go to the public cloud or build some sort of a hybrid environment. Now there's two types of containers that you'll, you'll hear about from our perspective. There are application containers, so the kinds of containers that you will use to, to deploy customer facing solutions um, to the broader market. And then there are service containers. And we're really focused today on the application container part of it. Service containers are initiatives like Airship, like OpenStack uh, Helm, where you're actually using a containerized infrastructure to deploy OpenStack services to simplify um, scaling out OpenStack and managing OpenStack itself. That's, that's an area that, we're, that, that we are working on as well. But really the focus here is how do you take advantage of an OpenStack infrastructure to roll out applications in a wide variety of, of, of um, areas. So we think that OpenStack's the ideal platform to integrate bare metal, traditional virtualized workloads, whether it's something like Kata containers where I've got a VM with a container in it or just native virtual machines, and then how do I deploy containerized workloads on that? The reason we think this is important is that you need a composable software-defined infrastructure at the bottom layer of your, of your deployment. And you need a set of APIs that actually enable you to take advantage of software-defined storage, software-defined networking, and software-defined compute. We think that OpenStack is that set of APIs, that set of capabilities, 
And unless you're going to have a single type of deployment, you want to have this mix and the ability to, to allocate resources in your data center across these various, uh, various technologies. So again, why is OpenStack the ideal integration platform? You have, a, you have a control cluster that you can deploy in a very highly available way, and you can use that to spin up compute nodes that have um, a hypervisor on them. You know, in this particular case, we're saying it's SUSE Linux with either Zen or KVM as the hypervisor, or you can just spin up bare metal, and you, you hand your users a bare metal server and they can deploy whatever you want on that. Now, some people are saying, well, okay, that's the way I want to deploy my container infrastructure. So I'll spin up a bunch of bare metal servers, deploy a Kubernetes cluster on top of the bare metal servers, and then, then I'm off and running with containerized workloads. One other alternative is that you actually deploy what we call Kubernetes as a service, so that you use OpenStack and you use heat templates to deploy a set of virtual machines, or it could be bare metal, and you use that to deploy your Kubernetes cluster, and then you can layer on top of that your applications based upon Kubernetes. Um, you can use something like Cloud Foundry to, to put even a higher level of, of uh, productivity interface uh, for your development community, and then automate that push, uh, pushing out the applications as quickly as possible. At the same time, you may still have a traditional set of workloads that you want to use as infrastructure as a service. Um, the traditional VM vending machine that kind of OpenStack was, was originally put in place to address. So this gives you the ability to have all of these capabilities in a single infrastructure that's easily manageable, easily configurable, and, and, and is done repeatably. So I mentioned um, this kind of as a, this is sort of the high level view of how we're going uh, forward. You know, a little bit of a plug, we have uh, a product we call SUSE Cloud Application Platform, which is designed to run on uh, any Kubernetes infrastructure, happens to run well on our Kubernetes infrastructure, which is SUSE our container as a service platform, and you can run all of this on top of our, uh, on top of our cloud environment as well, which is based upon OpenStack. So the idea is that you have a single infrastructure that can deliver applications in a variety of different ways, but gives you the, gives you the flexibility to manage um, your infrastructure in a consistent and uh, very productive way. So this is kind of our view of, of how all this comes together. You've got a cloud application delivery um, infrastructure at the top end of the, of the stack. You have a software-defined infrastructure which has uh, OpenStack at the top end, various components that you can get from, uh, from SUSE and our partners, including hypervisors, software-defined storage, uh, software-defined networking. Um, you can run all this on top of SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. Uh, you know, we've been in the Linux business for about 25 years at this point. Manage all of this in a very, in a very convenient and uh, productive way. And at the same time, you can move all this on the public cloud if you want to go, uh, go that way as well and have that all work pretty seamlessly together. So that's the, the quick overview. Um, obviously, if you want more, come up and ask us questions. Come by our booth and um, you know, we'll be happy to demonstrate some of the things that we're, uh, that we're bringing to market. So that, I'll stop. And again, I'll hang around for a little bit if there's any questions. Thank you.